After speedrunning Demon Slayer, One Piece World Seeker and Naruto Storm 4, I asked you guys what you'd like to see next, and a lot of you said Kakarot. Are you insane? That is a 4 hour speedrun. Over 5 hours on console. Damn loading screens, man. But then I noticed there's a Trunks DLC category and it's just 1 hour long, so I thought, okay, this might be a good place to start. And then I completely broke the whole thing. I didn't just get the world record, this category is forever changed now. Basically, I was studying the speedrun, looking at the current world record of 55 minutes and 30 seconds. And as I was following along, I noticed that my Trunks was falling behind in levels, and I didn't understand how that was possible. I was doing the same stuff, how come I was getting less experience? And then it hit me. Community boards. In the main game, you get these character medals that you place on these boards for different bonuses. And apparently, those carry over to the DLC. No biggie, we'll just have community boards before we start the speedrun. There's only one problem with that though. I cannot use my own community boards, because on my main save, I've already finished the Trunks DLC, and there's no way to restart it. Which meant I had to play Dragon Ball Z Kakarot all over again. Not just the main quests either, doing all side missions too, because all that matters is those community medals. And so, after 20 hours, I'm not joking, I now have a 20 hour save on Kakarot that I did specifically for this 1 hour speedrun. But I finally got the community boards that matter, let's begin Trunks. The whole speedrun essentially has two types of cutscenes that you gotta look out for. There are the skippable cutscenes that you just press start and skip, and there are dialogue cutscenes where you just hold square to fast forward. We start with some training with Gohan, and this serves as the perfect example of the meta in combat for speedrunning. Basically, we want to hit our opponent with as many body blows as possible. Body blow is a fast ability that leaves the opponent right next to you and deals a bunch of stun damage, so you can basically loop it with the right timing. Once the opponent is stunned, they take more damage, so that's the time to dish it out. Pretty simple. The fight's over, it's time to set up some of our specials. Equip the Masenko, equip some passive buffs and level up our body blow. Also important, equip body blow on Gohan and three passives. I go for for supreme power to deal more damage to stunned enemies, battle instincts to deal more damage to enemies of a higher level, and brick wall to gain armor during surge. Remember this one, it will be important later. We fly to the next cutscene while Gohan asks Trunks a very important question about his mom. By the way. How's she doing? I see what you're doing there, Gohan. This next fight ends when you stun one of the androids, so it's body blow time. After that, it's time for some more training. Dinner with Gohan. We'll be able to talk about all sorts of stuff. Yeah, after dinner you'll go to bed, Trunks, and when you wake up, you're gonna have a new daddy. We get a few more cutscenes and then we need to travel to Goku's house, cause Chi Chi is in trouble. These drones don't have as much health, so you don't need to go for a stun here, just pure damage is okay, and uh, oof, that was not supposed to happen. On top of that, this final robot summons some help, which is a bit of bad RNG, cause now we have to kill one extra robot, but it's lower health, so it's nothing terrible. We travel back to West City, and the androids are attacking once again. We start by stunning 18 while looking out for 17's attacks. Once that stun is over, we go into Surge, which gives us super armor if you remember the passive that we equipped earlier. That allows us to stun both androids at the same time while they are attacking us. And while the Surge is still active, we're gonna delete Android 18 by spamming some Masenkos. And now, it's a simple 1v1 against Android 17. We skip the cutscene where Gohan loses his arm, Trunks is a bit depressed by the whole thing, he can't even leave the underground lab properly, goddammit. So we level up some talents to cheer him up. Gohan thinks you need a break, so he suggests we go fishing, and this is the most RNG part of the whole run. We need to get three fish, and the first one was pretty fast. The fish spawned pretty close to the fishing pole, and that's what we want to happen. Second fish, also very close, we're getting lucky. By the way, you only need to get the right buttons here, the timing does not matter, but you do need to hit the right button. Third fish, also good, we're in luck, this is the run. The final training session with Gohan is pretty similar, but this time we have Surge, so we can spam Masenko to finish him faster. Gohan knocks out Trunks and goes to fight the androids on his own in what's probably the most annoying android fight. We don't do things very differently, but after going through a full stun phase on Android 17, we have to switch targets, because otherwise, 17 will just run away and you'll waste a bunch of time. And we have to do the same after a stun phase on 18, so you can't focus down a single target in this whole fight. We tank a lot of damage while in Surge to speed up the stun, so if you're not careful, you can actually die during this fight, completely ruining the run. But we did pretty well this time, Gohan goes all out in an unskippable cutscene, and 
and then he's completely worn out and waiting for the androids to finish you off. As far as I know, there's nothing you can do here to speed up this phase, you just gotta wait and hope they finish you fast. And they never do. If it's any consolation, we're already over halfway done with the speedrun. Trunks finds the body of his new daddy, gets really angry, turns Super Saiyan, and we get a time skip. Teen Trunks goes straight to Chi Chi to find the material that Bulma needs for her time machine. Because Trunks has grown, he now has access to the best ability in the game, Burning Attack. If you don't believe me, check out these robots. That's good range, that's good damage, and it comes out pretty fast. I do make the mistake of turning Super Saiyan, I should have just kept spamming Burning Attack, maybe I'll do that in a future run. We find the material Bulma was looking for, fast travel back to Chi Chi, because it's within the same zone, there's no loading, so it's definitely worth it. We go back to Bulma, and the androids attack once again. Trunks is feeling confident, because he has the burning attack now, and it does come in handy. We can actually focus down 17 in this fight before we fight 18, and if we're lucky, she'll get hit by a couple of these burning attacks. We didn't get lucky. The fight doesn't end well for Trunks, and the only solution left is to travel to the past. And so We get a bunch of cutscenes, return to the future, talk to Bulma again, and so we fix the past. While telling Bulma about it, we get a flashback of his training with Vegeta in the hyperbolic time chamber, and I sure hope this isn't how it went in the show, because if that's the case, I understand why Vegeta is salty all the time. That was three bars of health with a single burning attack. The androids should be no problem now, but just in case, we're gonna equip a new passive buff called Merciless, which buffs damage against lower level opponents. That's right, our 20 hour save is finally paying off, we have successfully out leveled the androids. At first it's just Android 18, which we take care without spending the surge, and then 17 joins the fight. And this one didn't go so great for me. 18 was able to get away from the first stun, because I was trying to charge meter. I was a bit greedy. Because she did that, she went into an attack, and that allowed her to regenerate a lot of that stun bar, making this fight last longer. Everything else went pretty great though, we're on pace for world record still, burning attack is here to save us. The androids are down, we just need to take care of Cell now. Unfortunately, I start this fight without surge, because I spent it on the last fight, so I had to do it the normal way. Otherwise, this would be over as soon as I stunned them. We can still get through it pretty quickly, big hit dome attack, the future is saved, credits roll, we skip those, and surprise, one more arc to go through. The Supreme Kai shows up, asks you to train so you can deal with Majin Buu. So, we stun the hell out of the Supreme Kai, spam some burning attacks, and GG. We need a better sparring partner, the Supreme Kai asks you to think of someone, and Trunks thinks of his new dad, but when he was little. You beat me up so much as a kid, how does it feel now, huh? Doesn't feel so good when a grown-up beats you to a pulp, does it? We're ready to deal with Bobby D and Dabura, but we're stopped by his minions, so we open with a burning attack, turn Super Saiyan, surge it up, and spam more burning attacks. Only Dabura stands between us and the world record now, and we got 6 minutes to bring him down. We stun Dabura, and the tracking on Trunks' attacks are being just terrible, so I miss a lot of attacks during the string, allowing Dabura to go into a surge, and now we need to find the gaps in his attacks so we can throw some more burning attacks at him. Skip a cutscene, and it's time for phase 2, where we have permanent surge, so we stun, and we burn. And on the first frame of the white screen, we stop the timer. And 51 minutes and 19 seconds, beating the world record by a whole 4 minutes. And this was on PlayStation 5, where each loading screen is at least 10 seconds longer than on the PC, so sub 50 minutes is definitely possible. But to do that, you're gonna need a 20 hour save on the base game of Kakarot, so you can optimize those community boards into giving you the best possible buffs. Everyone in this leaderboard was actually using the community boards without knowing it, so they didn't have them optimized for this. But now that you know that, it's time to push this category even further beyond. And that's how I broke the Trunks DLC speedruns on Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. But while making that 20 hour save, I did think that it might be fun to run Kakarot the full game. The loading screens are a bit boring and there's a lot of them, so I might wait for the PS5 version coming out next year. But it was fun and I look forward to revisiting Kakarot when that version finally comes out. Until then, is there any anime game you'd like me to speedrun? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Boy.